Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, we've been telling you that we were going to do something special for Resurrection Sunday. This truly is the day that the Lord has made and we've come to rejoice and be glad in it. We are bringing sunrise to Resurrection Sunday. That's right. That is right. And we're so thankful to God for all of you who are tuned in to check out what the Lord is doing. Listen, we praise God for those of you who continue to support this ministry. Those of you who have been so supportive of our food ministry, we praise God for you. The information on how you can continue to support our food ministry by bringing canned goods and non-perishable food items, the information is on the screen. We also praise God for those of you who continue to worship through giving. You've heard me say it now several times that uh, any tree that you see, and this is uh, tree pollen season and so you're beginning to see the trees bloom the pear trees are are blooming other trees are beginning to bloom well each of those trees it began with a very small seed and i want you to understand that everything that god wants to do in your life it also begins with a very small seed the great things the huge things that god wants to perform in your life the tremendous blessings that god wants to bring forth in your life it begins with a small seed a seed of faith i, I want you to make sure that you continue to worship the lord your god through giving because this is something that we're convicted about our biblical giving it honors god and god honors our biblical giving hallelujah Listen, we praise God for each and every person who is participating, not spectating, participating in today's worship experience. And we will be praying for everyone, including those of you who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Yeah, all of you special people out there celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, we'll be praying for you. And in addition to praying for our birthday celebrants and anniversary celebrants and, and, and those who are participating, we'll also be lifting our gifts up to God in prayer. As a matter of fact, let's do it. Oh God, our provider, we're so thankful to you for all of your tremendous blessings. On this day, we say thank you like no other day for what you've done for us through Jesus Christ, our resurrected Savior and Lord. We thank you for his life. We thank you for his death on the cross. We thank you for his resurrection from the grave with all authority in his hands. We thank you for the leadership of your Holy Spirit. We pray that we will take from this worship experience everything that you desire for us to glean from it. We pray over every participant in today's worship experience and for everyone celebrating a birthday or an anniversary. Our prayer is that this may be their best trip around the sun yet. Oh God, please go with us right now and keep us, strengthen us in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, go ahead and raise those right hands with me. Raise them high and repeat after me. This is our prayerful affirmation. In obedience to your word, we offer our gifts. By faith, we receive all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. L listen. We praise God for the opportunity to uh, share in this month that we're designating as Mission Month 2021. You've heard the promo, and this is just the reminder to let's get to it. Let's not be caught by surprise. We want everybody participating in. You know what's coming. Drop it like it's hot. No, 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 excuse me. Drop it off like it's hot. Drop it off like it's hot Saturday. That's coming up in just a couple of weeks. That's right. Drop it off like it's hot Saturday. It's coming up in just a few weeks. And so we want you to be a part of that. Now, listen, we have a very, very special message that is prepared for us on this morning. And we want you to stay tuned. You're going to enjoy it.
on the coronavirus emergency. Congress has now passed an $8 billion emergency coronavirus funding bill. Because employers ordering workers to stay home. The situation still is a low risk for the American public. But then again, that could change. Welcome back. Listen, listen, if you have not already done so, this is a great time for you to go ahead and hit the share button. That's those of you who are streaming with us by way of Facebook Live. Hit the share button. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Now, if you are rocking and rolling with us on YouTube, what we need you to do is to become a subscriber. Hallelujah. Now, if you would, please go ahead and turn with us in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 26 verses 47 through 54. Matthew chapter 26, verses 47 through 54. If uh, you don't have a Bible, don't worry. No worries at all. Every time we get to a scripture reference, we'll make sure that we put it up on whatever device it is that you're streaming with us on. That's how we roll, all right? And today, as we continue our latest teaching and preaching series entitled Forward, <laughs> Today, the Holy Spirit has given me this title, Judas and the Black Messiah. After a six-month delay due to the coronavirus pandemic, finally on February 12th, 
the highly acclaimed, highly anticipated film, Judas and the Black Messiah, was released to audiences worldwide. Starring award-winning actor Daniel Kaluuya, Lakeith Stanfield, Jesse Plummons, and Dominique Fishback, along with many others, the biopic endeavors to tell the story behind the assassination of civil rights activist Fred Hampton, the charismatic chairman of the Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party. Deemed a threat to America's political and cultural hierarchy by notorious FBI director J. Edgar Hoover, with the help of a mole, with the help of a rat within the Illinois Black Panther Party, the plot to neutralize the increasingly popular Fred Hampton was fatally executed on December the 4th 1969. Hoover's predominant motivation for Hampton's assassination being to prevent the rise of a black messiah. However, that brings me to my sole criticism, not of Shaka King's excellent award-worthy film, but rather of Hoover's desire to militate against the rise of a black messiah. My criticism simply but factually being that somebody at the Federal Bureau of Investigation should have told their director that he was about 1970 years too late. Please, please don't get it twisted. History has already recorded the rise of a black messiah born in Bethlehem, sent by God to the motherland to the continent of Africa to hide, get this, to blend in with the people for two years so that he and his family could not be found by King Herod. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, let the record reflect that the world has already experienced the rise of a black messiah. Some, some call him the King of Kings. Some call him the Lord of Lords. Others call him the Rose of Sharon. Still others call him the Lily of the Valley, the bright morning star. But everybody who is watching this Resurrection Sunday worship experience, everybody up in this Resurrection Sunday virtual experience, you know that his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Yet, yet, yet history, history has also taught us that you cannot have the rise of a black Messiah without the presence of a Judas. And that is where we find ourselves scripturally. Jesus has just finished praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. In fact, Jesus is just praying He's just finished, just concluded, praying for God's will to be done in his life. And the scripture tells us, verses 47 through 54, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will not at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? And that brings us to our first point of power. Faith in God does not grant us immunity against the plots 
of the enemy. <laughs> I know, I know you wish that that wasn't the case, but just go back. Just go back to verses 47 and 48. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Please, please recognize that is an extremely important understanding for us to embrace. Please, please, please get this. That right there, that is an extremely important understanding for us to envelop. It's, it's because you see, some of us, some of us unfortunately have fallen victim to the theological misassumption that if you have a connection to God through Jesus Christ, some of us have fallen victim to the theological misconception that if you have a relationship with God that goes through Jesus Christ, please excuse my grammar, some of us think that you ain't got to go through nothing. <laughs> but please, please understand that that could not be farther from the truth. You see, dogs don't bark after parked cars. <laughs> In other words, the enemy is after you because you do have a connection to God through Jesus Christ. The enemy is hot on your trail because you do have a relationship with God that goes through Jesus Christ. Yet, whereas our faith in God does not grant us immunity against the plots and the schemes of the enemy, here's our second point of power. You will come to discover that faith does grant us the assurance of overcoming the plots and the schemes of the enemy. You see, one of the interesting bits of information that came out of our COVID-19 conversation a little bit earlier today was, was that uh, one, each of the approved vaccines possesses varying degrees of efficacy. But then two, despite the fact that there is still a slight chance that one could be infected with the coronavirus even after being vaccinated, the reason why you ought to get vaccinated is because all of the approved vaccines are 100% effective at preventing those who are vaccinated from succumbing to the coronavirus. I, I need y'all, I need y'all to come a whole lot closer because although faith does not grant you immunity from trouble, faith does give you the assurance that you will not succumb to your trouble. I need y'all to hear me today because although faith does not grant you immunity from adversity, faith does give you the assurance that you will not succumb to your adversity. Are y'all hearing me today? Please get this, because although faith does not grant us immunity from the plots and the schemes of the enemy, your faith does give you the assurance that you will not, cannot succumb to the plots and the schemes of the enemy. We don't succumb to the enemy, no. By faith, we overcome the enemy. The text, the text tells us, verses 47 through 49, the text says, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them the one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Now, now please understand that most New Testament scholars, as well as most of you armchair and sitting at the breakfast table biblical scholars, most of us all agree that this was not a sincere greeting. 
In fact, when Judas calls Jesus rabbi, he is actually mocking the Messiah, which brings us to our third point of power. If Judas had the audacity, if Judas had the nerve to mock the Messiah, then do not be surprised by the fact that some people will mock you because of your faith in the Messiah. However, however, and this is the important piece for us, check out Jesus's response to Judas. In verse 50, Jesus simply replied, do what you came for, friend. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's Jesus' response. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I hear you. But go ahead. Do what you came for, friend. Yeah. Now, now, now remember, Jesus had just finished strengthening himself through prayer, concluding that prayer with a powerful declaration of trust. You know it. Father, your will be done. And now, here Jesus is in the presence of a disingenuous Judas who not only has the audacity to betray the Messiah, but also the unmitigated gall, the nerve to mock the Messiah in his face. And Jesus, Jesus simply responds by calling him friend. <laughs> please, please get this. Here's our fourth point of power. Sometimes God will enlist the help of an enemy to serve as a friendly platform to elevate us toward our ultimate destiny. King, King David, King David said it, said it better than I ever could in the 110th Psalm when he put it like this. God will make your enemies your footstool. And uh, in, in my house, Tiffany and I, um, with, with us having a little three-year-old, a toddler running around with uh, footstools all over the place, uh, one of the things that we have come to discover is that the purpose of footstools is to help you be able to reach, <laughs> just like our little three-year-old reaching stuff that we don't want them to reach. Yeah, footstools help you to reach those things that were previously out of your reach. I, I need y'all to come closer just one more time because don't you know that if it wasn't for the layoff, as bad as it made you feel, you would not have the position that you have now. Don't you recognize that if it was not for what you went through when you lost it all, you would not have the skills of money management that you have now. Don't you get it that if it was not for the bitter divorce, you would not have the loving marriage that you have now. If it was not for the betrayal, you would not value the true friends that you have now. If it was not for the cancer, you wouldn't have the testimony that you have now. Don't you know that if it was not for the enemy that God utilized to be your friendly platform, you would not be walking in your God-given destiny right now. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. It gets it gets even gooder. I'll make up a word. Check the text. Verses 50 through 54. Jesus replied, do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus's companions reached for his sword, drew it out and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? And that part. Again, I'll say it. And that part, that part right there is what I love about God, because what this indicates is that everything that was transpiring was not 
on account of Judas. Now, everything that took place, it was not because of the Judas. Uh -uh. Everything that took place, it wasn't because of Judas, but rather everything that was taking place was because of God. Yeah, everything that took place, it wasn't because of Judas's plot, but rather everything that was taking place, the betrayal, the arrest, the trial, the beating, the bludgeoning, the bleeding, the crowning with thorns, the stretching, the nailing, the banging, the hailing, hanging, the dying, the piercing, the burying was because it was a part of God's plan, which takes us to our fifth point of power. Please do not miss this. Judas's plots are always defeated by God's plans. Don't believe me? Just watch. He was wounded for our transgressions. God's plan. He was bruised for our iniquities. God's plan. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. God's plan. And by his stripes, we are healed. God's plan. But can I take it a little bit further? Matter of fact, can I say it like the like the old school preachers used to say? They hung him high. God's plan. They stretched him wide. God's plan. He hung his head in the light of his shoulders. God's plan. He died upon that old, rugged, blood-stained, splintery cross. God's plan. But can I tell you that God planned some more stuff? Early one resurrection Sunday morning, Jesus got up from the grave. God raised him from the grave with all authority in his hands. God's plan. God's plan. God's plan. God's plan. And so here it is, our sixth and final point of power. And I want you to get this. Despite how life tries to bury us, like Jesus, God's plan is always, always to raise us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, if you've been checking us out today and um, you have uh, been wondering, you know, why, uh, why does it just seem like things are, are so out of whack? Not just maybe in your life, but you might be looking at it from a from a broader perspective, you may be saying, man, why does it feel like, why does it seem like things in this world are just so, just so off? I mean, we see these eruptions of, of violence and we, we see these manifestations of, of new age Jim Crow. Some people call it Jimmy and Janie Crow the progeny of Jim Crow. We, we see these uprisings, these insurrections of white supremacists. We, we see these brutal acts of violence against members of our community, even right here in Metro Atlanta. Eight lives lost in violence against Asians, primarily Asian women. And when you think about the world in which we live, it's easy for us to just say, golly, come on, man. I don't stand a chance. But I'm here today with this message of Jesus Christ to assure you that you do have a chance. But that chance comes by way of faith in Christ Jesus. Listen, I like you, I get down when I watch the news and I see all of the things that are taking place in our world today. But my faith, my hope remains in Jesus Christ. Even when things happen that we don't understand, by faith in Jesus Christ, we're able 
to overcome. We're able to get through. We're able to keep moving forward. And so if you're watching today and you want to move forward, you want to continue to move forward. You want to be everything that you've been placed on planet Earth to be. I'm tell you, telling you, it begins with a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And you say, well, Torrin, how do I do that? It's not complicated. It's not complex. All you have to do is receive him into your life. And one of the ways in which you can receive Jesus into your life right now, whatever you're doing, one of the ways in which you can invite Jesus into your life is by way of the prayer of salvation. And I invite you to pray that prayer. Come on, repeat. Repeat these prayerful words after me. Oh God, you are my redeemer. I admit that I am a sinner. And so I thank you for Jesus and the cross. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that you raised him from the grave. And because of what you have done, I am saved for now and forever. Amen and amen. If you pray that simple but powerful prayer with sincerity, those words are absolutely true. You're saved for now and forever. Amen and amen. All we need you to do now is to let us know about what you've done. And the way that you let us know about what you've done is simply by texting the word friend to the number that you see on the screen. 404-637-2223. Text the word friend to that number. And I'll tell you that we have nothing better to do than to celebrate what God is doing in your life. Listen, you may be saying, Torn, Torn, let, I got a connection to God that goes through Jesus Christ, but I'm not connected to a church. I'm not a part of a ministry, and I love what you guys are doing. I love the way that you are concerned about the community, and you show your concern through action. I, I, I love the way that you love people, and you minister to people through action. I even love what you guys are doing now, the creative ways in which you present the gospel message. And uh, I just want to know how I can be a part. I just want to know how can I be down? Well, it's very simple. Simply text that word friend to the number that you see on the screen. 404-637-2223. Text friend to the number on the screen. And I'll say to you as well that we have nothing better to do than to celebrate what God is doing in your life. Listen, for those of you who have been so supportive of our ministry by way of your support of our food ministry, by way of your worshiping through giving, again, we praise God for you. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. It is because of what you do that we're able to meet the needs of people in our community. Remember, our food ministry is not for the greedy, it's for the needy. And, and so we're able to do what we do because of people like you. What we're doing today out here for Resurrection Sunday, having a sunrise service in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, we're able to do that because of your financial support to our ministry. And so we pray that you continue to support the ministry tangibly financially. We pray that you continue to be blessed knowing that biblical giving, yeah, it honors God and God honors our biblical giving. Hallelujah. Listen, it has been a blast being out here in the cold. <laughs> but if Jesus, if Jesus went to the cross, certainly I could stand in the cold for a few minutes to bring forth this special presentation of our Resurrection Sunday morning message. 
We look forward to seeing you this and every Wednesday for Revive Wednesday Bible Study, 7 p.m. sharp. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Also, every Wednesday, 6 p.m., is New Generation Children's and Youth Bible Study. If you're the parent of a child or a teen, you don't want them to miss out. And so call the church. Uh, if you are a recipient of our email blasts, um, check out the email blast for information about New Generation Children's and Youth Bible Study. If you're not a part of our email list and you want to be, or you just want information on the Zoom for New Generation Children's and Youth Bible Study, just give the church a call. Amen. Then at 7 p.m. sharp, streaming on all of our social media platforms, is our Revive Wednesday Bible study worship experience. We want you to be a part of it. Again, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. And in just a couple of weeks is Drop It Off Like It's Hot. Drop It Off Like It's Hot Saturday from 10 to 2, Saturday, April the 17th. It's going down. It's going to be absolutely awesome, and we want you to be a part of of it. So make sure that you pay attention to the promos and information about what we need for Drop It Off Like It's Hot. Drop It Off Like It's Hot Saturday is going to be absolutely awesome. And you can participate whether you're in Walla Walla, Washington or whether you're next door in Washington County, Georgia. You can participate because uh, those delivery trucks, <laughs> they go right past 4141 Old Fairburn Road, Atlanta, Georgia, 30349. I'm just here to tell you, hallelujah. And so there's, there's a way for all of us to participate in what God is doing. We are so thankful to God for today. And now for the blessing. May the love of God, sweet peace of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide within us all. In Jesus' name, we do ask it all. Amen and amen. Peace and love. This is Torin Daly signing off of our Resurrection Sunday worship experience. Big shout out, big thanks to everybody on the production side of what you say. This would not be possible if it was not for some awesome, awesome brothers who work on the video and audio production side of what we do. And so God bless you. God bless your families for the time that you have to spend with us. We praise God for you and we're thankful to God for you. We look forward to the Lord even taking us to, to higher heights. Go back and look at Resurrection Sunday last year and look at what God has done as you look at Resurrection Sunday this year. In just the, the span of about a year, the Lord has brought us a long, long way. And it's due to those people, God utilizing those persons that we just mentioned. And we're just scratching the surface. The Lord has a, a long way to take us. And I look forward, for, look forward to every inch, every centimeter, every millimeter of the ride. And you're gonna be along for that ride too, as the Lord continues to take us higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. We'll see you real soon.